So we're going to watch this. This is the female Nikocado avocado is so much worse. We're going to learn all about it because I feel like this feeder gainer content has been legitimately like under people's noses for quite some time. Hello, YouTube. I hope you're having a good day. Come join us on Twitch if you ever have time at twitch.tv forward slash hex underscore juice. And I'm not going to stall too much. We're just going to get into it. Subscribe! As one mighty creator falls, another rises from the ashes, ready to be much more destructive than the last. We have yet another story of a creator damaging their body in the sake of content. By chasing the view counter, she's growing more desperate and outlandish with every video that she makes. And in the process, she's satisfying one of the darkest parts of the internet in some of the worst ways possible. Jelly- Hey! Have you guys ever wondered why so often in these kind of videos, white liquid splurts out of the, the, the food? We just saw it. It was running all down her hand and on her face. I wonder if there's a reason for that. Hmm. Bean sweets could be worse than Nico Avocado and she needs to stop. So hello everyone, welcome or welcome back. I'm Jet Baz and today hello. we're going to be running blind down a very dark alley. Jellybean Sweets is a massive creator on the TikTok platform and yes. on the face of it she just does mukbang content. But the longer the- That's so much sauce. Liquidy viscous sauce. Often white, not always. Hmm. I wonder if it's going to get messy. But you look, the more excruciatingly sad everything turns out to be. She's been compared to Nico Avocado and she's even been called his sister. And that's for very good reasons. She seems to be somewhat of a protege of Nico Avocado, seeing what he's done and then following in the footsteps. She was mm -hmm. once an active girl doing lifestyle content as well as like dancing, drizzled in with a odd bit of mukbangs. But as the food content blew up and she saw how well it was was doing she seemed to chase it more and more and more to points honestly that i'll never understand leave it as i hate eating in front of people and i hate chewing in front of people i i guess what i want to say is like they always eat this the food kind of like messy and there's always like food all over their face and it's always very like ew, ew, ew. and i i don't want to sit here and just like make fun of the girl but I literally will wipe my face and wipe my hands after every single bite rather than be messy when I eat. And I'm super weird about it. <laughs> this kind of content now gives me the willies because I enjoyed mukbangs when it was just, you know, somebody sitting down, telling you a story, telling you about something that happened at some point, eating some food and it's like social and it's enjoyable. I like that. What I don't like is I'm going to take these like massive bites of like an insane amount of food, be really messy. The messiness and of the eating is also on its own can be considered content. It typically is that like low key content. There's a TikTok trend for a while where people were uncovering the fact that there was a lot of that odd, bizarre sort of uncanny content that was in fact content. Do you guys were you guys around for that? It was a lot of uh, it was a lot of like goo dripping on feet in like five minute craft style videos. Uh, but there's a lot, a lot of low key content on the internet. Sorry for the curse knowledge. It's what I do. But this is a form of it. Is this like messy eating, big bites thing as well? Here now with content which some would describe as feeder content kink talk where people in this depraved nature are wanting to actively fatten up the influencer in some sick mm -hmm. kind of way of sexual gratification and not only does it appear that this seems to be happening but she's also feeding into it a lot mm -hmm. we've got so much to unpack here so if you enjoy the video please do hit the like button and subscribe i'd love to see you back we get to 30k and it helps out the channel a lot so nico avocado I'm gonna stop pausing so much, but I do just want to say I'm really glad that this is something that's being talked about more in a mainstream sort of way. I don't know how else to say it other than I'm a collector of bizarre knowledge. I just like to know stuff. And so there's so many things that are on the internet that are just horrendous that people just don't know about. And I'll mention it offhandedly on stream and people are like, girl, what are you talking about? And then I, oh God, let me get into this. How do I even explain this? But this is one of those things. And uh, if you didn't watch my video about the Nikocado avocado stuff, I want to make it clear because I don't know if this person is going to get into like the core of the feeder 
but I do want to make it clear because I think it's important to understand why it is a problem to feed into to feed into this kind of content. Ultimately, it is a control thing. It's not actually technically speaking about them getting fat. It's not technically speaking about them eating. It's about watching someone be vulnerable and become more vulnerable over time and lose control over their life. In these situations, it's about watching that as a as a viewer, essentially, right? But uh, in the if somebody were to have like a feeder feedy relationship, it's about taking power over them. This is an extremely super duper extreme. I think people don't really think that when they like, oh, well, it's just like eating until they get fat. It, it extends so far past this concept of like feeding them until they're obese. It is a, uh, I want to feed you until you can't, you don't have control over your body. I want to feed you until you're dependent on me for everything. I want to feed you until you are incontinent. That was a lot of why Nagakato Avocado would uh, poop his pants. I don't know how else to say it. He would poop his pants a lot, like a lot of times. And ultimately, like kind of the end part of this, the most extreme part of this is, I want to feed you until you die. I want to feed you until your body doesn't work anymore and you have no control over your life and you die. That is what this is. There's not really a lower end of the and a high end of the And I'm not saying every person who has this interest is that way a lot of them are very you know they don't want to do that to someone in real life it is just a fantasy thing for them so they'll engage in fictional content but yeah it is a really extreme because i think when you just hear oh it's just feeding somebody it doesn't sound that crazy but the actual mentality and the reason why it is exciting for people is uh, inherently very very extreme so i want to say that up front because i don't know how many people know and people are just going to go oh well it's weird and gross and i don't like it but you have to understand the core of these is typically not what is actually occurring. I know a lot about this stuff. I took a lot of classes on it. It's just a personal interest of mine to learn about. Uh, I studied it in college. And so uh, I just like educating people on these things because if you understand the core of it, it uh, sometimes is more alarming than if you just see at face value what they are doing. Okay, about last week and he managed to say that this was all a ruse that everyone had been played. And it really made me think about Jelly Bean Sweets because she is- Look at that white liquid splurting all over the burrito getting messy on her hand i wonder if there's a reason for that it's not playing anyone there's also as i say so much similarity in the content that they produce and also the dark alley that they went down starting from this very fresh clean person going into these dirty disgusting sort of mukbang videos she's a 20 year old tiktoker influencer and mukbanger who has 1.7 million followers on tiktok which is fucking loads but not 1.7 million is wild that's actually a <laughs> that's so much that's crazy. Not only that, it's evident from the amount of views that you can see. Look at more white liquid. See on a previous con Oh, more liquid over here too. It looks like it's getting messy. Content that Oh look, it's body checking. We can see her whole body on display. It's very different than it was in the videos of her original content. Isn't that so crazy? It's only getting better for her. Like she's just blowing up recently. And the reasons why are very sinister. Over the Last few weeks, she's gained 300,000 followers as Jeez. well as over 4 million likes on all of her videos. But the problem is here, people aren't logging into her content to see what she's doing and enjoy herself. They are genuinely worried about this girl because the path of where she... I don't think I need to say anything. You can say it in your head. ...came from to how she is now is genuinely terrifying and it really does ask questions about the morality of the stuff that she's doing at first when she started off her content it did seem to be a lot more innocent with her just going up for example here painting herself and going on tiktok live and just showing her artistic expression it was somewhat That's wholesome cute. it was innocent it was a girl who's always seemed to have a bright spark in her and a lot of people at the time genuinely did latch onto her at first because of the way that she projected herself she also, in typical TikTok fashion, was a dancer who would go and do dance routines, this sort of thing, which is obviously something that's very uh, pushed on the app, and it's something that a lot of people like to see and watch for inspiration, which, bear in mind as well, you've seen the drastic change of how she has been, and this is just over one year ago. Like I said- A year! Well, because you have to understand that, like, it's not just the people who are interested in the kind of low key content that she's doing that are watching her. It's also people who are like essentially watching in horror. That was a lot of the people who watched Nikocado Avocado. 
not all of the millions of people who would tune into his videos were doing it because they were, you know, jerking, jerking they shit, you know? <laughs> They were also tuning in to kind of watch the train wreck, to, to watch the car crash. The beautiful thing about this content, in a way, if you're really looking for like a lot of viewership and a lot of engagement on your posts, is it's not just the who will tune in. It is going to be the thousands and thousands of people who are tuning in to go, oh my God, like, are you okay? What's happening? Why are you acting like this? I'm really worried for you. And that gives you like a ton of engagement. So uh, engagement, views, attention seek, it is very, very effective on a lot of levels. That as well, she'd focus on very typical influencer things such as haul videos like this one here. I just went shopping, so let me show you what I got. So from TJ Maxx, I got this like pre-workout. I never take pre-workout, but it was $10 and I was like, might as well try it. What? I, I don't know what's in pre-workout, but that is crack. I just wanted to say that is insane. Workouts seem to have been second nature for her in the past, but uh, that has very much disappeared entirely from all of her content in the past few months. With much more of this instead. From Kroger, mm. I got these. I've become obsessed with these since I've started college, and they're like my happy snack. Um, I feel like Rice Krispies are not that good, like the ones you get from the store. I think homemade Rice Krispies are really good, but regular Rice Krispies do not slay. I also got these, which are like... So good. I didn't know that. That is acid. I hate sour skittles. <laughs> I like sour candy too, but sour skittles like burn a hole through your tongue. They're insane. They made them in the like larger sizes. As you can see though, watch her demeanor, watch how she acts and how bright of a spark she mm -hmm. seems to be and how that changes over time with what she's doing. Like she I said, just smile. your typical influencer. She would go on lives. She would do this sort of stuff where she's just uh, there talking to the camera, talking about- She has such a pretty smile. Sorry, I keep like, uh, her, her smile is like really catching my eye. She has a really, really pretty smile. <laughs> she has really good teeth too life just being a really positive influence which is totally in like a dichotomy of what she's like now there doesn't seem to be like a switch in her content where she just ended up turning into this person overnight it was very much a slow introduction and there's two instances here which i've found which sort of bring out who she is and what has she become because in my opinion she definitely started going down the experimental avenues to try and earn money from this as mm -hmm. you'll see throughout the entirety of the video the ways that she has tried Damn, I thought that that was going to be a video with no white cream. <laughs> I was like, yeah, let's go. There's no weird sauce on her hand. And then she took the bite. God damn it to explain what she's doing as well as bat it off one of the big points about her and what switched is that she was a pescatarian but as you've seen from some of the b-roll not anymore this was roughly just over a year ago she tried her first chicken sandwich and that was it and me and my sister were talking about it in the car and we thought it was gonna be so expensive i paid about 24 but i got a lot of food and the cheese dip so good. Just to notice with the sounds that she's making, all this, that, the other, she's definitely starting to bring this new idea of herself to the fore, whether or not she thinks that she's just a messy eater. I don't know. I'm a I can't see I'm eating food. I can't see I'm eating sounds, dude. I... <laughs> the second I start hearing that, I, 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 I go into a blind rage. Something changes in me when I hear mouth sounds that I can't explain. I don't want to bother to try to explain it, but it just makes me mad. Pescatarian, so I've never eaten chicken, but eating stuff with me. So I got quite a bit because I ordered it through Uber Eats, so I got $20 off my first order. So it was really inexpensive to get the things I wanted today. All right, so this is the first box. This looks like the cheese fries, which I actually got for my sister. So she got a lot of food. Uh, she made yeah. it into a proper book bag. And this obviously only continues and gets much worse. But also note, like she said there, she's a pescatarian. At this point, she has only eaten fish as a choice. So this is an introduction to chicken. And since then, no looking back. Remember as well that we can pull quite a few similarities with Nick Avocado yeah. here because Nick Avocado was a vegan. He would only choose to eat certain foods. And I think Nick Avocado, Avocado was a raw vegan. And I said that, yes, the other day, but I want to make sure. He was a fruitarian, actually. Yeah, so yeah, he was like the most, the most, most restrictive version of a vegan. So he was a fruitarian and raw food vegan, meaning he like, he ate fruit and things that were not cooked, <laughs> which is like 
four things. There's a lot of bananas, probably an avocado, if I were to guess. Then once he had his life open to all of this horrible junk food, uh, especially in America, it changed massively. I just to think that this bite here changed it all. It's just so weird. I'll try the garlic parmesan first. Wow, they're still hot. Okay. And that was it. And that is the face. See, that was pretty normal. I hate the, yeah, I hate the eating noises. But I will say that was a normal bite. That was, she didn't put the whole thing in her mouth at once. She took a bite out of it. I think that was a normal amount of sauce, but I like a little bit of sauce personally. I, and honestly, if you're a ranch person, Wingstop, the ranch is very good. So I think that was very normal. This is very normal. We want to remember the snapshot of what it was like before of destruction that is about to come. From this, she would start uploading more and more videos of her just simply eating food, eating big amounts of food and responding around it. She would do an introduction where she shows a haul of what she's got by talking about it. And then she would do a simple ASMR sort of mukbang. And I think the mm -hmm. ASMR section of what she was doing, which she really seems to have focused on in recent months since this has all happened, is quite astounding. Because when you talk about kink talk, with full body shot body checking all of the feederism stuff we're going to get into it really does paint a picture of well that's exactly what she's doing she's feeding into it if you'll pardon the pun quite a lot of her content now consists of her doing stuff like this where you are just quiet just totally eating and that's fair enough but this mm -hmm. evolution really did go down south because she was constantly doing this uh, because it kept getting views and once you're chasing the view counter this is when things get slightly more desperate, slightly more outlandish. And in this case, it's not ended up well. Because yeah. as you can see, this is her first video that she uploaded when she was 19, just over a year ago. And I checked this just to double check because I honestly couldn't believe. Sorry, uh, I want to look for myself. Absolutely, when you I'm so sorry. I needed to look for myself. I have to look for myself. I have to look. What is her name? Jelly Bean Sweets? I need to look for myself. I'm sorry. Uh, that like that like that took me aback so severely that I have to do my own research. She's 1.8 million, by the way. Dude, she's getting so 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 many views on these. Look at all that sauce. Like, okay, can we be real? You get to pick the exact frame that you choose as the cover for your TikTok. Why is it this one? Why do you think it's that one? Oh, and the tummy is exposed. I didn't even see that part. Leave it when I saw it. It's definitely a bit of a bad angle. But this is her at 20, just over a year later. Wait, it's something that a lot of people do tend to gain over time. Like, it is sort of a slow process. So for a year, such a drastic change in her body is actually insane. Until you look at her channel, you realize the TikToks, and you see how often she's doing this. At some point, she's doing it literally daily. And it seems to have become not only, like, an obsession in herself to get views, but also some sort of, like, food obsession. And she needs to eat the all the time and like i'm gonna be real if you were eating like that in front of me we would never i like those the the big bites and stuff i i understand why she's doing it it's part of the content but i'm gonna be real if we went out to lunch and you started eating like that like shoving the like m your full mouth your whole full mouth we would we would not be friends anymore i would be very unhappy i'd be trying to leave through the bathroom window or something because i would freak the fuck out i can't stand that with nico avocado it gets really overwhelming it gets really outlandish and it really only damages the actual person but with all of this kink talk stuff going on it makes it just oh so much worse mm -hmm. i've got another before and after here where it, this is obviously her in the video that i showed earlier as the introduction where she went on tiktok live she looks happy she looks good she's got a very she's good pretty. jawbone like that is very prevalent and she does see she's mewing at us chat she's mogging i can't believe i'm being mogged on seem like a vibrant character and this is totally flip flat within the space of a couple of months because as you can see here she's a lot more washed out and flushed in her face uh, she's got a very round facial structure compared to before and like i said this has so many people worried because it is such a massive transformation over the course of even a couple of months at this point it seems to have exploded but everything as i say is entirely because of the way that she creates content she mm -hmm. creates this content which is 
constantly trying to one up itself and it's only going worse and worse over time how many times could you eat a burrito Ugh. until then you start eating two burritos three burritos and then it really gets outlanded like she's eating like, the big bites it's also like um, I, I i'm having a hard time not like being upset about the bite i really wish you'd stop showing this video because it's just upsetting me it's not good for your digestion like it's not great i hate it it's not healthy at all for the person and with everything else around it, I, it's it's so bad. Like I said, with a lot of the people around it, it's more a cause of concern because they're seeing this person literally blow up in front of their eyes. And it does remind them a lot of like Nico Avocado, uh, but this seems to be much faster than him, if I remember correctly. And that's obviously helped by everything she does, but mm -hmm. it is already getting so outlandish. One example of that's here, which for your amazing convenience, I'm gonna play on muted for 10 seconds. I'm really sorry. <sighs> on her stomach too it's obviously already getting really sloppy uh in this video she's got a belly out showing which is another feeder thing and it looks disgusting look at that food how could you even call that food at that point that just looks like a mess because like i said it just keeps getting bigger and bigger adding more stuff more sauce to everything wow white creamy sauce wow 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 Everything, as you can see wow, two ash browns wow, this time wow. starting with zero uh, it's just getting bigger and bigger all the amount of foods that she's eating the type of foods and it's looking a lot more oh wow we got we need more sauce guys it's it's looking dry it's looking dry we need more <laughs> Oh, unhealthier God. as the days go on and if you haven't clocked already there is a solid reason why this is the case it's yeah. not exactly because she's trying to follow in nick avocado's footsteps i think it's very monetarily right as to why she's doing it in mm -hmm. her mind and the unfortunate reason is feeder content which uh, is something that really you don't want to be on that side of, <laughs> of the internet oh my god because it's not only something that is dark depraved and disgusting in my opinion it's also also something that is very dangerous to the creator over time feederism is something that is disgusting because of the way that it comes about so-called yeah. feeders mostly men although not exclusively flock to online platforms including reddit phoebe and fantasy finder to find feedies mostly women who will eat huge amount of foods on camera or in person one of the apps has 97,000 people on there so it is essentially a micro kink within a cosm of the sex community online and this has been tied to jelly bean sweets because of what it is the women involved can make thousands of dollars selling their content to men mm -hmm. desperate for sexual gratification these feeder videos have one simple and consistent theme the women post videos of themselves eating usually with plenty of loud biting and chewing noises often they perform naked or wearing revealing outfits sometimes you remember Nick Akato Avocado eating food on the floor, uh, naked or not naked and with underwear, but you can't see it because his like fat rolls are covering his like his his willy. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's a lot, and um, there's so much of this stuff. I'm I'm sorry for cursing you with this knowledge. If you don't, if you did not previously know this, I want to say from the bottom of my heart, I'm sorry. The world is so much than you probably thought it was before. <laughs> they feed or are fed by someone else this is something that's definitely been tied to nico avocado and it really does seem the case here even more mm -hmm. and the reasons why this content is wrong and bad is very obvious because you are trying to fatten up someone for your own sexual gratification and yeah. the creator in doing all of these eating videos of blowing up in size and getting much wider has a lot of health consequences around it one feeder in a daily mail article said i developed diabetes i could barely walk i was very sick nauseous and dizzy all the time and this content is usually something that is behind and hidden through paywalls but obviously in the case of jelly bean sweets it's just open and out there today the well the beautiful thing about it is it's not directly doing anything wrong right like that's why it's like cursed knowledge like oh i am i am pulling the wool over your eyes that it is something more than you thought because like you might have seen one of these videos and been like, I don't like watching people eat like that. Like, why Why is she doing that? Why is the, like the, the gluttony of this is very like gross. Like, I don't like it. Like it, you could have seen it and, and watched it even and not had any idea that the purpose of it was uh, very specifically to feed into that kind of content, right? 
if you don't care about yourself that much and you want to eat some food and you want to make some money and you want to get some attention, it's really a pretty good gig. <laughs> You will be doing all of those things. The problem is that you're like destroying your body. And then obviously like there's a question of your integrity when you're posting it on TikTok, which is obviously an app that's primarily for children. There's a lot to talk about there. But yeah, I mean, it's a pretty good gig if you want to make some money, I guess. Global demand for sexualized feeding content has grown vast as there are at least 30,000 feeding related accounts on OF alone. And with mm -hmm. this only comes more worry for the actual content creator that is participating in yep. this, such as Jelly Bean Sweets, but also the fact that it keeps on going. There's not really no end point to feederism. You sort of do it and you do it and you do it. You get fatter and fatter and the fatter that you become, the more accepted you become to these people. It's a very- Well, there is an end goal. I just don't really want to say what it is. There is an end to this kind of cut. <laughs> I'll just let you imagine what it is. Weird form of gratification, and it's a very, very unhealthy one, which is why so many people are worried about her. And her content, like I said, really does play into it, especially recently. Like I said, it's getting sloppier. It's getting more disgusting mm -hmm. to watch. It's just getting more calorific in general. There's more yeah. and more instances of her eating more. The grilled cheese burrito from Taco Bell. I'm going to be real. I like a little bit of Taco Bell here and there. Okay? Taco Bell is my personal favorite, like, fast food. If I'm going to go somewhere, I'll go to Taco Bell. However, the grilled cheese burrito is, like, I, like, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not trying to be like, oh, I'm like a skinny girl. I can, like, barely even finish my food. The grilled cheese burrito is an absolutely insane amount of food. One on its own is so much food. Like, I'm not even going to get into, like, the calories and fattening and all of that. Like the actual bulk of the food in a grilled cheese burrito is fucking insane. If you've never had one of those, my husband really likes them. I don't get them because I physically cannot finish them because they are like huge and have so much. Like they're good uh, in moderation. You can enjoy it. But like having like two of those just like double fisting the grilled cheese burrito is like insane to me. They slap. Oh, yeah, they slap. They slap. It's great. They're they're good. It's just like it's so I guess to me, it's like the image of her holding two of them is like, how the fuck are you going to eat all of that? <laughs> it's like there's so much food. I believe very much that you can enjoy anything as long as you do it in moderation. You work, you exercise, you know, you get outside the house, you move around all of those things. You can absolutely enjoy Taco Bell and be a perfectly healthy human being. And I want to make that clear. Those things are fucking huge. And you should, two of them is crazy. All stuff, like I said, there's people that are saying that she's now showing a belly, which mm -hmm. she is in multiple videos, which is another thing that feeders love to see. And that's. They also tend to show their belly in a way that is incredibly unflattering to them. Because like, uh, if you're a girl, you know, you got a little chub around where your innards are to protect them. Every girl has it. It's very hard to work it off. You got a little, a little pouch around where your womanly organs are to protect those womanly organs. That's why they're there. So like a lot of like when you're taking a picture or you're taking a video, as a girl, you're going to try to sit in a way that is more flattering to your insecurity, like, usually it's going to be an insecurity for you. If not, then slay. However, they will purposely sit in the most scrunched, unflattering fashion to accentuate the, the fat, essentially is what that is, is what I'm trying to get at. Mainly where the concern comes from, because it is so weird. It's so wrong. And the yeah. problem for people is that she was this happy, outgoing, uh, outlandish person who used to go out, she used to dance, she used to be really active, and now she's gaining weight massively for this attention in any form that she can. She's chasing the views and she's chasing the money and it's evident to see that and it really does ask a question as well, is she intentionally doing this feederism? And in yeah. my opinion, I feel like she is, but there's yes. not also that there's been somewhat evidence of proof. She's oh. playing into it, she's potentially become infatuated in it and she is also getting monetary gains from it. As it seems one creator has exposed her for doing feeder content. Ooh. Messaged her saying, do you do customs? And then her saying, what do you mean by customs? <gasps> Custom mukbangs. How much would you like to pay? 
and how would you want me to eat? Obviously exposing herself there if these DMs are true to be an exclusively custom mukbanger, which uh, really is batting around the idea of being a feeder. This person then said, I'm willing to pay $150 for a messy burrito, saying, can you make it like this one, but with more liquid? And as mm. I said, more and more of her mukbangs are becoming very, very disgusting in that sense. Mm. They're becoming a lot more messy, which really mm -hmm. is not helping the case that this is some form of of, like public sexual gratification going on jelly bean sweets them yeah i mean you don't you don't have to show me any of these dms she's making feeder content i don't need to know that she's willing to do custom content like that to know that's what it is no one eats like that in real life and if you saw someone eating like that in real life you would uh punch them in the face probably or really 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 want to but you would be like disgusted nika kato avocado had an only fans for example right nika kato avocado uh was also allegedly on a feeder website let's not get into it it doesn't really matter if she'll do custom stuff that's exactly what she's doing she's doing it for that reason and th at some point she's become aware maybe she wasn't originally she is now responding yes i ordered a quite a few sauces it's going to be messy saying mm. i actually ordered taco bell it's coming in 10 minutes i'll be willing i can post it on tiktok like i do emphasizing yes not talking only eating with mm -hmm. her then saying yes i ordered quite a few sauces it'll be messy and for the payment could you just order me some stuff off my wish list that's easier for me mm. because this seems to be something that she has done in the past she doesn't have her wish list fully open and available now i don't know why it seems mm. to be because of all of this feeder content that is going on and everyone's accusing her of doing this but what she would end up doing is getting people to order off her amazon wish list which would then act as a payment for feeder content which obviously means there is no direct trace to being like oh yeah the, this is definitely feeder content you are paying for me to get messy and this sort no, of sense that's pretty direct. Like, oh no you buy me a gift so i'm gonna reward you by doing this it just makes yeah no <laughs> It reminds me of a certain other streamer who also was known for worrying behaviors around their body and food. I'm not going to say who it is because I really, really, really don't like that content creator. You can fill in the blanks. But it was always very interesting how if you watch their streams very much, you would see that they would suddenly get donations when they do certain behaviors. Ah, I am very thin and very frail. I am now going to needlessly struggle to move a box across my room. Wow, thank you so much for the donation of $200. That was so nice of you. Isn't that interesting? There's this kind of thing goes on in both sides. Uh, there's there's so many very many variations of, of weird content that people do live on camera or posted videos and you have no idea that it is specifically for the purpose of being It's so crazy the paper trail a bit easier uh, and it hides the true identity of what she's doing with then liking the love heart of the okay message i've seen a lot of stuff recently around the problems of kink talk of tiktok with kinks uh, and it really does seem like this is another instance of that but it's not only another instance that's very open and seen as it's kind of hidden in the background mm -hmm. she's not going out there and she's saying that i'm doing it for this exact case but it really seems like it but it also worries people a lot because this is someone who who is appearing as a very innocent character in very innocent natures when really every bit of content has a very sinister undertone. Yeah. This is another gripe that you see a lot of people talk about with her content. For example, here with as a strict mum of 10-year-old twins, one of them being very impressionable who is starting to hit the age of worrying about weight, this just makes me stand my ground a hundred times harder when I get the looks from other people when I say I don't let kids have any form of social media. I don't Good ever mom. want my kids to see this this would be influenced to develop such harmful relationships with food and think it's normal or be persuaded to try it to be famous it's so terrifying and unhealthy and like you see with how good mom good mom good mother good parents 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 insane parents great parents keep your kids off social media the is weird and you have to remember this is not on some weird little seedy nasty website that you have to look you have to look up a specific search term for this is tiktok which is primarily an app for children this is tiktok and it is specifically for the purpose of being under people's noses and not necessarily being totally clockable. What she is actually blowing up at the moment, it really does make a bit of confusion because yeah, she really is becoming a bit of an impression at 1.7 million. And as you yeah. can see, it's a very horrible relationship with food in the form of a mukbang, uh, especially a very messy, dirty one. Some people mm -hmm. on the internet seem to be a little too easily influenced. And I mean, you only got to go in the comments to see that people are really resonating 
with this content. As what? you can see here, I don't normally eat Taco Bell, but she had me at the drive through the other day. I literally went to Taco Bell because of her. Unfortunately, I am just jelly bean sweets. I cannot blame her for my takeout habits. Literally me going to Taco Bell today for the first time in months. Whether or when you guys watch that, those videos, does it make you want to eat that food? I feel like I see that and I'm like, uh, uh, I, I don't know. I don't feel like she's making that food look delicious. <laughs> I think it looks grotesque and horrible. Not you think something just as like a silly sort of uh, recording where she's just eating a lot of food is seen as innocent or not. It's undeniable to say that she is not influencing in at least some forms this sort of content where people will go out and they will do the exact same thing, try and eat as much as they can and as i do personally think that some people should be able to try and look after themselves and work themselves around in that way it definitely does give a bit of an implicit sort of tone to it and like i also said it's just so weird when you consider the content is actually sexually connotated but yeah. this one incident isn't isolated and there is multiple other experiences which show that she definitely is doing this for the feeders there is one instance here of her going onto her followers and seeing the feeders that are in the content that she's oh posting my and God. although i don't think this directly links in the sense of that well obviously feeders are going to be attracted to females online that are doing this type of content yeah. anyway whether or not they're doing it for feeding or not it does show at least that people are hanging around her that are in that sort of sphere but then also there is proof of this one specific person who is new england feeder 602 <laughs> being the top gifter for her on her previously used content on throne which was her wish list for everything throne is i feel like 50 dollars for a wish list is not that much <laughs> i don't know what she's making now because they said amazon wish list earlier but i i will say how do I say this? How do I say this? How do I say this? I, I know very, very small VTubers that make more than $50 from people like donating on Throne. It's, it's really not a lot. The $50 is not that crazy. I see people buying like entire PlayStation 5s for some streamers. So and I don't know. This is like a weird nitpick, but that's not that much money. <laughs> if that is being used as evidence, it's not necessarily the best evidence in my opinion as well may i add is because like if you looked at my throne uh which i don't really use anymore because i uh, i don't need because a lot of times i would use throne for things that i kind of needed for like streaming but if you look at my throne if you're using throne donations it's really like people are very supportive of their streamers and their content creators and stuff so uh, people people will spend money on that kind of thing they just want to support content creators i don't think that that's that crazy However, that's obviously a purposeful thing that they're doing it via gifting and stuff like that. And I would say it's very likely that if she switched off of Throne to an Amazon wish list, it's because it doesn't show so directly how much money people are spending on you. And that a lot of social creators use who are in the OF sphere, places like that. People who do plus 18 content generally tend to use Throne because it is a way of giving away gifts very easily. Here we can... It's not just OnlyFans, people. Uh, I know a ton of streamers that use it. It can be really nice if your chat wants you to play a particular game. Like a lot of the games that I've played, I got from my chat. Occasionally, people will buy you other stuff. Like I, I've gotten plushies and a couple of other little things. But it's really not that crazy. It's not only for OnlyFans, people. Granted, OnlyFans girls do tend to use Throne because you can be like, hey, in your next video, I'd like you to wear this little outfit. And then they send the outfit and then they have the outfit kind of thing. But it's like it's a great alternative um, if you want your community to support you more directly rather than just saying like, hey, gift me 10 subs so I can, you know, make money. It's like if you'd like me to play this game, you could buy the game for me and then we don't have to like, you know, it's more direct rather than having to go through all of the like the, the Twitch fees and stuff like that. That's that's I, I don't think girls that crazy. It's not only for OnlyFans girls, but it is often used by OnlyFans girls as well. You can also see her wish list with what she wants, including in this one instance, lingerie, which I find a little bit weird. Oh. Like obviously, linking the two, would I want people going and buying me lingerie? No. no. No, why, why would you want your content creators? Why would you want that? You don't really want your audience buying you that sort of stuff because that's obviously very odd. And once again, yeah. links to the sexualized nature of it because she wants people to go and buy her this sort of stuff and potentially maybe even see her in it. Once again, just linking the sexual nature of it to this, but then also the fact that, well, this feeder's paying for her, it, it does add a little bit more context there. Especially when you saw, as with the DMs of her saying, just buy stuff off Amazon, on wishlist well i'll buy this stuff you know it's at least a little bit weird but then she no 
it's mega super duper weird. I would say she probably did do Amazon wish list because it's less uh, like obvious who's paying you, how much they're paying you, all of that stuff, right? Still super duper weird. I don't I don't think we need this much evidence. It is absolutely feeder content. That's why she's doing it messy and nasty like that. That's why she has her belly out. It's the same shit as Nikocado Avocado. I do not need proof that she's getting paid for it or compensated it in some way. She's doing it that way for a particular reason, and that particular reason is feeder content. She was also spotted on social media liking a post which really does link the two even further, with a user saying, nah, it's the weirdos with fat who are paying this girl, someone saying exactly, and then she likes the comment exactly. Ooh. She's calling her weirdos and, and oddballs, and I mean, I can kind of get that. I definitely do think they are that. Yeah. But you're playing exactly into their playbook. You are allowing well, this aware. sort of content. You're not only allowing it, you're actively engaging in it and wanting to do more and more. But also, would I want to be actively engaging, promoting, bringing people in that want this sort of, like, very weirdly depraved stuff? No, of course I wouldn't. Especially if in the jelly bean sweets case i am a very positive woman who wants to be outreached i want to be doing dancing and stuff and it's definitely an intentional pivot from her channel to go yes. down this avenue to try and get more money and this is definitely it is absolutely on purpose i'm sorry uh, uh the whole point of this kind of content as well the reason why she's not going to directly say this is feeder content i'm getting fat for people who want to watch me get fat i'm eating for people who want to watch me eat i'm being sloppy like she's never going to say that directly because if she did then it's going to actually be properly moderated she can hide under the guise of like well it's just mukbangs like plenty of people do mukbangs like what's wrong with that there's nothing wrong with a mukbang Sorry, I'm a little bit of a messy eater. There was just a lot of sauce. It was really delicious. Sorry, I'm enjoying my food. Like, it, it allows you to, to maintain this kind of covert nature of what she's doing. She's doing what she's doing. She knows what she's doing. That's why it's getting more severe. Assume they know what they're doing, especially if they continue doing it and are making it more direct and more severe. Uh, uh, please. It's something that has been spotted very recently with her content where people are noticing that it is going down and down a spiral and it's mm -hmm. just getting worse, more outlandish, and it's only going one way. And that is to promote this feeder content, yes. which then in turn gets her more money. Ignoring all of the moralities of like, Gino, just pretending this is a nice, innocent little thing that she's just doing. It's, uh, it's weird. And this was getting spotted months ago with loads of people mm -hmm. on Reddit talking about this and really trying to show and expose her for what she's doing. One example I have here, I've realized they see a lot of people over the internet say there's no way Jellybean could be catering to feederism because she doesn't show a body. In my opinion, this one fact alone makes it a million times more likely she is in fact purposely catering to feeders. It's mm -hmm. like any kink, only so much can be shown for free and only so much can be put onto a platform as accessible as TikTok. Which is true, but as we've seen since this post, she has started posting slightly more bits of her body as she does manage to get larger. Which because, well, the point of it is also, if you don't show your body for a while and then you show it again later, look at the shocking reveal. It's been so long since we've seen a larger, like a more of her body, a larger shot of her body. Look how, how much bigger she's gotten. Like that, 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 that does play into it more to not always be showing your body is that you get more of a dramatic, like uh, transformation, a more dramatic reveal in between the times that you show your body. It, it is so intentional. I can't stand people who try to act like, oh, we need to get better of the doubt. Why? If she's not aware, then she should be made aware. She like, please. But she, they're, these people know what they're doing. They do it so low key like this on absolute purpose. Supersedes this because it's essentially proving even further that she's doing this intentionally. Going on also to say that I think for the people who like funding Jelly Bean, they also love the control of knowing they're the only ones who can actually see her properly. And I'm not sure about that one. There's nothing that I've seen so far which can prove that she is doing this on the side. She's sending photos to people, but. Obviously, this is going to be something that is quite well hidden intentionally. Yeah. But you would have thought with the amount of internet detectives going on nowadays, there'd at least be one that has managed to infiltrate this. So I don't think this is the case. I feel like she's just catering for feeders because it makes her a lot of money and that's mm -hmm. it, really. It's yeah. nothing to do with her trying to get like extracurricular stuff going on. I don't. I just can't like close your lips when you eat, please. I'm sorry. I, every time he switches to the footage of her eating, it just starts pissing me off close your lips seal your lips together when you eat your food and if you are taking bites that are so big that you cannot close your lips take smaller bites i understand why she's doing it it just pisses me off it just ugh. 
think any of that's the case. This specific Reddit user also signed off with something which is generally quite harrowing around her. I'm sure that all the money looks great now, but in experience of doing things, they are morally dubious or that you don't agree with for money is something that you can't undo and can't make yourself forget about. And that's yep. also the point we're trying to look after her, make sure that she gets better from this because she doesn't want to get better only going downhill and she will look at the money and she'll look at the money and think this is going really really well but over time this is going to disappear you might be making 20. no feeding into your empathy gives her more money feeding into your empathy feeding into your concern feeding into your humanity feeding into all of that makes her more money because you are engaging with her and making it more uh, successful in the algorithm the thing about uh showing your concern commenting how you're afraid commenting what you've noticed all of those things it doesn't actually help them at all it doesn't help them at all a lot of times it'll confirm that they're doing the right thing that you're concerned because it means they're 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 being more grotesque and they're being more successful in what they're trying to do because they're not trying to please people who care about other people but it also is like you're just boosting the algorithm by commenting on it at all by talking about it at all and that's the thing that's so like about it is like the human nature is to be empathetic to these people and assume that like they're going down a dark path and all of these things. She knows what she is doing. She has no desire to get better. She's getting, I imagine, a whole lot of attention and a lot of money for doing this. She does not want to get better. There is no reason to waste your emotional uh, energy and your empathy on someone that is doing it for money. Maybe that's a bit of like an asshole take there. She knows what she's doing. She's doing it on purpose. Being concerned for her is a waste of your time. 30, 40 grand a month maybe for a few months, but then once it all dissipates and destroys, because this is inevitably something that happens with these sort of channels, it's gonna really turn bad and you're gonna be a 21 year old who then has no clue how to navigate the world. Sitting here for hours on ends just trying to get the next big dirty meal that you can eat is mm -hmm. really a good idea. That's so much like, because we remember, this is also Wingstop. This is, this, this is the same food. This is the first wing stop to a new, more recent wing stop. Her belly's out. She's scrunched down. She's dipping her entire fry and coating it entirely in ranch. Like, this is like a totally different meal. This is a totally different situation. And it's like, it's sad. And I understand the need to be empathetic, but no, fuck this. Idea looking at it because you're getting millions of views, but how much longer is that going to last? And I think in her case, once everything gets blown off the top, not long. Because it is true that a lot of the controversy surrounding her and a lot of the interest surrounding her is purely because she's doing this type of content on a public platform mm -hmm. and people are not only worried for her, they also find it quite disgusting. Yep. She definitely plays into this. She loves it. She enjoys it. And for example, here we've got a calorie counter for one of the things that she is doing because as I say, it just keeps getting worse so i knew she did these like pretty regularly but i didn't know she Wait. did this literally for her meals of the day so let's see what the calorie count on her breakfast is looking like so to start off the morning what's a better way than taking down six donuts the thing is with this stuff as well you can't argue that she didn't do it because she did she does it on camera so it's not even a bit like she has gone and eaten all of this shit just in one day I feel like I die. You know when you have too much sugar at once and your mouth just starts feeling icky? When you have too much of something that is like just sugar, like it's not like even anything else and you just start like your 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 mouth starts to feel yucky and I I can't I don't want to eat anymore. I, six six the last donut. This is the raspberry vanilla cream. A slight little 350 calories. Can you imagine like actually eating this just for a breakfast? Like, can you actually imagine it? I don't think I'm gonna be real. I can't even eat sweet, sweet for breakfast. I am a savory breakfast girly. I'm a savory girly in general. But, like sweets for breakfast, like fucking kill me, dude. I just feel like ass the whole day. I can't handle the sugar in the morning. I'm a savory girl until I die. But like six for breakfast, just waking up six. Ugh to tell you how unhealthy that is but even just trying to think about how i'm gonna eat that much in the morning just fills me with dread and i'm only five seven so i can imagine that these are going to add up to my entire daily calories for the day mm -hmm. but take all those donuts down you already know she had to take an alani energy drink i can respect that she you could always instead of using alani energy drink you could use a uh, gamer subs use code hex just to check out for 10 percent off it is uh very good <laughs>
Very good. And it's much cheaper than a Lottie, so... <laughs> Pick the Cosmic Stardust, because that's hands down the best flavor Alani has. Now for her breakfast mukbang. This comes out to 1,710 calories. And you see Jesus. with her, with the content, it's not that. It's the fact she'll have that for breakfast. She'll probably skip lunch and then she'll have something for dinner as well because that'll double down on what she's doing. And it's disgusting. Like, it is disgusting how you can eat that much food when you understand. Uh, how do I say this? As somebody who's worked with people with eating disorders, as someone in recovery from an eating disorder, I don't think it is necessarily helpful to focus in on like the calories and how disgusting they are for eating that much food and all of that. Because ultimately, if this is somehow not just because she's, it's a thing and she wants the money, eh, shaming is not necessarily that helpful if it is actually like she has a problem with the food. You know what I mean? However, we need to focus on why she's doing it and what continues to like encourage her to do it. And that is, I think, more important than uh, like, oh, it's just so foul that she would even do that. Like to me, it's more so it's like I just that much sugar, I die. It's just an awful way to start your day. But if she does actually have like an eating disorder, being like a shamey is not necessarily helpful. But I guess maybe I just don't really care, actually. You know what? I was trying to do like a bit of an empathy take there. But honestly, uh, I don't really care. She's destroying her body for money and doing um, low key content on tiktok where kids are so i actually don't care i changed my mind understand the connotations of it all like it is it's a really slippery slope sometimes jelly bean sweets will upload two times three times in a day and when it gets to that point like she was just sniff, look at the face she made when she's sniffing mac and cheese yeah i don't care i don't care never mind no empathy take i don't care look at the face who makes this face when you sniff mac and cheese look at the face upload two Two times, three like, times in a day. Come on and now. When it gets to that point, how are you even like, how's your asshole? Fucking hell. I feel really sorry for your toilet bowl. And even now, three days ago, as you can see, she's doing a side profile now. She's making sure she gets her stomach in and she's yamming this. I, I don't even know. The food is looking more and more unlike food. It's so pale. It's so lacking in color. Like, I don't know. It's something about it. It's just, ugh. Bear in mind as well, this is while she's on holiday. So while she's on holiday, she's finding places that she can do these disgusting, like, drip on foods. Oh, oh. And for the sake of content, how much further are you going? Uh, uh, Where's the fucking sauce off your lip? I'm going to freak out. Uh, 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 uh. Oh God, the sauce on the lip, the white sauce on the lip, the white sauce on the hands, the white sauce dripping, white sauce, white sauce, it's everything, everything is fucking white sauce, path. I'm freaking the fuck out. How can you even Skit make it now. further? And it does really reminisce to Nick Avocado. As much as so many people have seen him as a hero and uh, a super villain even at some no, points for what he has done because he's just managed to come out and be like, oh no, I'm not fat anymore, good luck. There's absolutely no doubt that throughout the entirety of these videos that he had pre-recorded and brought forward, it was very very odd it was yeah. a chase for views so it was getting more outlandish it was getting dirtier it was getting massive bigger and bigger and exactly like jelly bean sweets and in the process both of them get bigger both of them get much more unhealthy both of them end up going down and spiraling due to their mental health and then what do you have left what do you have left in you you've just got this shell and you can Ooh. come back and you can say like for example in nick avocado's case that oh well this was just a for content, you've been rused. And I might have been rused, but I also have noticed that you have probably taken a significant amount of your life away by chasing this. And why I think Jelly Bean Sweets might be even worse is that she doesn't do this outlandish shouting, screaming. She's not like Nick Avocado in that way. She's very uh, silent in a sense. She's very uncontroversial. She will be as positive as she can be on camera. And then when it comes to it, she's still eating all this shit and she's still promoting it in a more malleable way it's more of an introductory way it's something that kids can see a lot mm. easier and think that this is more normal it's a bad influence i didn't actually consider that actually honestly is the concept that like because it is less in your face because it is less like something that your parents will walk by your phone and be like "Ew, what the fuck is that it actually makes it a lot easier to get people into this not just kids but just like people in general of being like, what am I watching right now? And then maybe, you know, everybody, a, a lot of people are a little bit freaky. We can be honest. I don't think every needs to be completely like shamed. I think that feeder stuff is like, you know, really extreme. However, like, uh, you know, doing low key 
content in general on any public platform, especially when like TikTok is kind of fucked up because there's a lot of kids on TikTok. Um, but like that's actually such an interesting thing of like it's an introduction to that in general and can get people into it more easily. But also by staying un uncontroversial, the thing is, is that she'll always have defenders and not even like uh, freaky defenders who are into the content she's doing. She'll always have defenders because she seems sweet and like her life is just falling apart in front of her eyes. It can be seen as I can't tell you if it's on purpose or not or if that is the intention. But regardless, the impact is that it ends up being a bit of a strategy to be very sweet, to be very uncontroversial, to not do anything all that crazy, to not be talking any shit, right? Because it means you will always have these like diehard hard defenders where it's like, you just don't like, you don't understand. Like you'll always have those parasocial people who will be like, who will white knight for her, which is very valuable in this situation if you want to continue what you're doing because there's always going to be people doubting that you know what you're doing when you clearly do. And it keeps up engagement, which is really important in the TikTok algorithm. It's actually very smart. I can't tell you if it's intentional or not because I don't know this person, but it, it culminates in being a very smart strategy influence on children it's a bad influence on children especially when you link the feeder content aspect to it and it's all just weird on top of all the feeder stuff that she's been doing she has also been promoted on feeder apps such as mm, here with belly really? fan 2017 posted about her they do have some creative names don't they belly fan i don't know if i can stomach this with even these feeders saying we'll certainly contribute to this one though she's really fattened up in a year obviously making it much more palatable wow to these people who I find this sexually gratifying. We've also comments like she's getting so beautifully thick and can't wait to see more. Oh. Which is just... I don't, I don't know. Maybe I'm on the wrong side Ew. of the internet, but I find this so weird. <laughs> As someone who was previously 15 stone, there's nothing fun with being unhealthy. And even the feeders are preempting what is about to come. She's definitely getting thick, and unfortunately, she's going to have to stick to gorging herself on thousands of calories of fast food to stay relevant. She's just oh. not that interesting enough otherwise of a person to carry a channel otherwise. Good for us and bad for her, I suppose. They what? She's not interesting or entertaining enough, so she's gonna have to get even fatter to keep people watching. That's insane. These are your fans, dude. They're literally, that's so wild. Love it. They're happy that she's managing to eat a load of sh to stay relevant. And exactly like I say, this is going to happen. She is going to try and eat more and more food because it's going to make her at least somewhat still relevant because if she's posting the exact same things again and again and again, people will lose interest. And this is the cyclical nature of social media. This is what happens when people manage to blow up big off of these sort of gimmicks. They just need to do more outlandish, outlandish uh. stuff. You saw this, for example, with prank videos such as Rowan Atwood where he pretended that his kid had passed away as some form of like funny prank prank for a family channel yeah brilliant it's the exact same thing she's gonna have to bring more and more food to the table quite literally or there's going to be problems for her staying relevant for so long she also has been feeding uh pan the pun into it a bit more for example here saying when the hate comments pay for my trip not that they're necessarily hate comments they are more so comments that are tailored towards the fact that you're doing this for sexual gratification and it's a bit odd whilst also totally ignoring the fact that you are doing it for that case with the captions being out here living my best life and i genuinely can't imagine what the 19 year old dancer would think about you doing this sort of stuff and calling it your best life that sounds a lot like copium in my opinion mm -hmm. it feels like she's uh, just ignoring the fact of what she's actually doing to herself because she thinks that she's winning she's winning at life but you're not you're not winning the only way is down here also with tiktoks like Ugh. this about learning to love myself making sure that she's traveling she's going out she's loving herself she's looking after herself in that sense but you're supposedly loving yourself whilst also actively damaging yourself every day by doing this type of content you see where there's a little bit of a discrepancy there it's just evident to me that it is really coping with the situation at hand because she is really going off the rails and then she's trying to say that she's still on them when if i don't think it's so much like you can interpret it as her coping you can personally in my opinion i think this again goes back into this concept of we are putting up a, a wholesome, normal, living a good life sort of front. There's nothing weird going on. It's a strategy. I choose to see it that way. I don't, I don't like, I guess to me, it's like when you are posting this kind of content on the internet, I don't know how much I really like care to like empathize with your 
like this uh because it's such a damaging and and just horrifying to be honest with you but the reality is is like uh it can also just be seen as a strategy of if i never say anything is wrong and i say how good my life is we continue to have this like i'm unproblematic happy wholesome normal person which continues to have you get defenders and have people like comment on your stuff because it's like because then there's also just going to be those people who comment how the fuck can it be your best life when you're doing this to yourself like it, it helps engagement all of this helps engagement so we could see it in this empathetic light of like understanding your emotions or we could just see it as like some is just intentional and we have to recognize it that way especially when it's on social media in fact in an act of desperation for more money you're deciding to go down these darker darker paths money can change people money definitely does change people but does it end up with you like this i don't think it should also posting stuff like this with her act to black out the haters saying did they hear what you said about you well i i don't know did you did you by then going yes and well i'm enjoying my life look at mm -hmm. everything that's going on that's beautiful around it and i feel this is what a lot of people do when they end up getting a lot of money and they done it in very like irrelevant means they try to prove to everyone that well i am enjoying myself i am having a lovely time this is amazing when in reality you're at home every night checking your phone and wondering why it's all gone wrong from looking yeah. at her content it is evident that she has always wanted to be or at least up until she started doing her content she's always wanted to be an influencer she's always wanted to be one of these people that just gets off on social media and i'm sure a lot of people in the world do think that seems like a comfy easy job right but i don't think this one's easy uh, and i think what you're doing is is a lot harder because in the sake of your poor tummy <laughs> Her poor tummy probably so fucked up all the time, dude. Oh, God. The food is like, oh. Again, I, I might just be a girl with a tummy that get, that hurt. But like, oh, God. Uh, how do I say? I think content creation is really hard. Social media is really hard. Getting hate on the internet is really hard. I just have a hard time feeling sympathy when we choose uh, this 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 avenue because um, I guess to me, when I wanted to be a content creator, the idea was that I would be able to interact with people, that I would be able to entertain people, make people laugh, enjoy, have people enjoy their time around me, make things that are interesting and exciting and, um, you know, have people like to talk to essentially. Like a lot of people get into content creation because they're lonely. We can be honest about that. I don't know that anybody gets into being a content creator or an influencer and wants to do that specifically because that's not really entertaining people. That's not really making something that is valuable to you or valuable to many people. And like, I guess to, to just be like a controversial person who makes controversial content but tries to hide it, I, I don't know. It doesn't seem very enjoyable to me coming relevant you are destroying your body for example in this video here showing that uh, finally buying a camera to live out my childhood dream of being an influencer something that you have looked up to for years and it is so exciting it's such an exciting moment when you get yeah. to finally become uh, something that you really want to do in life of but course did childhood jelly bean sweets think at this point yeah this is what i want to be doing i want to be eating a load of food on tiktok to sexually gratify older men whilst also posing it as an innocent happy-go-lucky content no i don't think they did a no. lot of people have also said around her content that she is earning loads of money because she's getting absolutely like parabolic amount of views but it's that's stupid not amount of case. views well it is but it isn't at the same time this can be seen in a taco bell mukbang a couple of months ago where she showed this mm, there's some funny videos going around saying i make what was it <laughs> 250k i wish <laughs> i so wish oh my gosh that would be amazing rpm is like how much you're paid per thousand views mm -hmm. my rpm it was always below 10 cents. At least. Is that what the RPM is on TikTok? No shot. That is insane. 10 cents? I wonder what the average RPM is like on TikTok. That's fucking I also insane. Really wanted to know like RPM changes per creator per video, but like 10 cents is wild. That is stupidly per low. Revenue is, uh, it's it, the RPM. I don't remember what it stands for. Essentially, RPM is the amount of money you make per thousand views. So every thousand views, she makes 10 cents. That is uh, stupid low. What is the fucking point at that point? For the first week of the month, it might be like... It's easier to get views on like short form content, no? Yeah, I mean, it is easier. It, it, it makes sense that the RPM is lower. I was just surprised by how low it is.
That's all I'm saying. Yes, it should be lower. It's easier to get views. You shouldn't get as much money as you would get from like a, a longer form video, right? It's less on YouTube as well. Uh, but I was just surprised by how low that was. Uh, it doesn't feel that worth it to me. But I guess if you really like making short form content, I don't know, man. 30, 40 cents. And then as the month goes on, it lowers drastically. So right now, my average RPM is 7 cents. Oh, the math, you can do the math. Um, but yeah, not 250. I do think this really does prove the fact that she feels she has to keep doing these extravagant videos because the amount of money that she's making is very minuscule compared to what you look at and see. Oh, she must be on loads. It's still an absolute content creators focus on long form content, please. God, short form content is like so not worth it as your primary form of content. Holy fuck. Oh my god, that is so not fucking worth it. I, this person gets millions of views on these videos and I probably get more getting like a uh, 10, 20 K. Just make long form content, please. I'm begging. I'm begging. This shit is not worth it. That is insane. The amount of money that Seven she's making. Cents? I did her last five videos and then managed to work it out. And it came out to about $1,000 off of like 15 million views, which Jeez. is not that much money. But then you realize that this is in the past two days. So guys, she keeps uploading and she's mm. constantly churning out content. She'll easily be making what, like 10, 20, 30 grand months. But this is why she's feeding into the algorithm. Feeding. She's feeding this constant like deep dive level of just shit where she's constantly eating shit she's constantly going forward and obviously that also shows how much money that she's making because she can keep doing that as long as she's got an empty stomach she can keep churning it through and then it really does make sense well if in the last two days she's done five videos and as you can see on her page if you go on it it's very very active she yeah. is constantly going through stuff she will be making a lot of money but she will also be fully bloating her belly the entire way through because she's Ugh. gonna keep doing it as long as she gets a load of money i would be sad we're not even through the year and y'all think i made 250 <laughs> i mean i still make like obviously i think i mentioned this before i quit my part-time job like i make more than i was making there yeah sorry for the chewing noises i absolutely hate it but yeah thank as you we've Thank out. you. She said, I you also do the hate math. it. Stop and it. I've done the math, and it's very evident that you are making a lot more money than that. You are making so much more money than a part-time job. Easily, yeah. in my opinion, six figures this year, but not close to two hundred and fifty thousand. I don't think. And as you show, this shows you to live and not just survive, and it really does because you get to do so much more things with the amount of disposable income that you get. But once again, we pivot to the fact that what you are doing is so damaging for yourself, and also it is a very weird weird circumstance that's on tiktok because i i swear down i barely see Ugh. any of this that's aimed at like kids it's a bit confusing why she's pretending that she doesn't earn as much money as we all think she does but i guess she's gonna try and hide for it behind a veil and even though she doesn't i don't understand why content creators do that in general because i gotta be honest i thought at the current size that i was at that it would be like like oh i'm just uh, you, i just make shit. i just don't make anything and it's like i don't make uh, like an insane outstanding amount of money, right? But I make more than I could probably make at at a full-time job. Like not like a crazy amount more and it would be like a full-time job with like pay, which is probably all I could get with my bachelor's degree. <laughs> I guess what I'm trying to say is like, I don't like that content creators under exaggerate how much they make from content creation a lot of the time. And I'm saying this as like as somebody who doesn't do like a lot of sponsors or anything. Um, you can make very decent money and that's like, okay. That's like a that's like a good thing. That's like an exciting thing. But I don't like when people try to pretend that they don't make as much money as they do because content creators make a lot of money. <laughs> like we've talked about, she's got a wish list and she gets stuff from that wish list. And not only does she get stuff, she also shows it off when she gets it. Which bear in mm -hmm. mind when we talk about the feeder content, like she's getting this stuff bought so that she can end up doing these feeder videos, which then sex and gratifies people. Doing yeah. a bit of a uh, anniversary tour, going around like, oh, look at this brand new prize that I've got from someone who is a feeder is a bit weird. My yeah. new DJI Osmo Pocket 3 camera with me. I am beyond excited. <laughs> Thinking about buying this for a little while now because it's literally a pocket camera. So it's really small, but it's got many settings and it's got a little gimbal too. Um, Remember that she didn't buy this. This was on her Amazon wish list. So Sheila Defo got it bought for her to do a feeding video. Uh, Jellybean. Uh, 
Oh, uh, yeah, it's all very wholesome until we remember how we get the thing, isn't it? And it's like, I want to say, like, I don't necessarily, I'm not, I think that getting a little freaky in a consensual matter privately is, like, fine. Humans are weird. Sex is weird. Humans are into weird things sexually. I don't necessarily think it's, like, the biggest deal as long as consenting and, you know, not hurting anyone. There's a nuance there, right? But when you're posting this kind of content for money on the internet and it's getting shown, I'm sure, to lots and lots of children, it's kind of weird. Tweets really does hide what she does, in my opinion. I, I really do think that she is doing this stuff to promote feeding content, which is she sexually does. gratifying, but also it brings in a lot more extra money towards her. Because it's not only from the feeders who are gifting her and giving her this money, it is also from everyone that is screaming around her saying that she is doing this feeding content and she's playing into it. She's keeping mm -hmm. it brass. She's not really addressing the controversy at hand apart from, oh, look at the haters. Uh, and the only times that she has like directly addressed it is one by accident by talking to someone in dms about doing feeding content but also by saying that the people that do appreciate it in this sort of sense are weird well why are you doing it then why do you want to yeah. be feeding the weirdos it's just a it's just a question on her tiktok because there's no way she doesn't know that's the thing about it is like even if she didn't originally know there's no way she doesn't currently know like it's in her comment sections it's probably being screamed at her anytime she does like fucking anything. If she didn't know, she knows now she's getting worse. The knowledge has made her continue down the path and be more extreme. I hate the benefit of the doubt argument because at some point, I'm sure she didn't know. She has to know now. There's no way she doesn't know now. And not only does she continue doing it, she's doubling, tripling, quadrupling down and making it worse. I just don't care couple of weeks ago she posted this what if i never made a video trying chicken for the first time and like we said she used to be a pescatarian and now she is a carnivore i think we need to ask that question too because it is very pivotal in what has happened to her and how she has become how she is it's mm -hmm. because of the fact that she has done this stuff for so long she had a bite of chicken it changed her life and then she's pivoted and gone further and further down this spiral where now we're at a point where she's just gaining weight it seems every single week and there's nothing no one can do about it but not only nothing that we could do about it i really feel like she's not only playing into it she, i feel like she actually enjoys it now i think she enjoys the attention that it brings from people pretending that this is what's going on or at least yeah. in her mind pretending attention's fun it's not pretending this is we could be honest that content creators are attention whores right I, I i hate i hate when a content creator tries to pretend like oh i don't really want to touch it for anything like oh i'm just I'm very like no 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 if you don't want attention for it why'd you post it on the internet everybody likes attention attention is great it's just a very specific kind of attention she's getting. I don't really like it. No, we all do it for attention. Every content creator has like an ego to a certain extent. Otherwise, why post it? Just get a hobby. You just want to make stuff and be creative and it's all about the passion. Why post it online? Just do that you're passionate about privately. You post it online for attention to a certain point. You know, like uh, everyone likes to be liked. Everyone likes to get positive reinforcement. Everyone likes to be validated. Everyone likes to be told that the thing they made is cool and like that they're cool. That's why that's part of why you become a content creator no matter what. I'm sorry what's happening i do think as time goes along it's just going to get more and more outlandish there's going to be more and more sources and we are going to be watching more a Nico avocado type of beat it's yeah. legit going to be the exact same thing just over the course but i think this time it'll turn out that the person wasn't actually lying about how big they are and how outrageous they are it was all for content this isn't going to happen in jelly beans case because no. she's on tiktok she's got so many videos to do it's going to be impossible for her to do something like that she's just going to spiral spiral and spiral and i think at one point we're going to hit breaking point and we might end up getting some sort of rant some sort of outrage as she manages to get worse every single video I hope here here are my personal predictions for this situation okay my personal predictions are she will uh eventually lose relevance because she will hit a point where she does not want to continue doubling down and becoming more extreme and then after that, she will either quit that or she will have a massive public breakdown that will get a lot of attention and keep her going. Or uh, eventually, yeah, we might just have like a big crash out and she'll just get worse and worse and worse and worse and worse forever. And then there will be a crash out because, again, there's a, there is always going to be like an upper limit 
limit of like how insane and how inflammatory and how sensational you can get. But there isn't going to be a stopping point most likely where she decides that morally she doesn't like it that much and she starts doing something else. Let's just be so for real. She's gone this far. She's going to keep going because she's obviously getting worse. The thing is, is that you do have to keep going. Like we, like he already talked about, you have to keep getting more extreme. And um, she's either going to hit a wall where she doesn't want to get any more extreme and she will lose relevance or she'll keep getting so extreme until like she has a lot of mainstream attention and it's not very much fun anymore. For Jelly Bean Sweet, she at least tones it down a little bit and stops praying to the feeders because not only that, she's a massive TikToker who's going to be plastered on so many people's For You pages, including yeah. children. Not only setting a bad precedent around how we eat food and how it should be normalized to not eat like this, yes. but also in the fact of the sexual gratification that comes from watching feeder content from all of these weirdos. Stop playing into it, look after yourself, get healthy, and please, please stop. But what what do you all think? Do let me know in the comments. Yeah, she's not going to do that. Just to be clear, she's not going to get better. She doesn't want to get better. She will either be forced to or she will keep getting worse and just become an absolute like low cow type like Nick Ocado Avocado. That's what it is. That's kind of the point of the feeder content. And she's already chosen her path. That's why she's getting worse. Trying to have any argument that she doesn't know what's going on is absurd. But yeah, let me know what you think down below. Did you ever, have you ever heard about this person before? I had heard about her months ago. Have you ever heard about this kind of content? Do you know about all of the hidden content on the internet because man i it, i could really expose a lot of weird y'all thank you guys so much for watching i appreciate you so much love yourself drink water have some vegetables today i will see y'all later Bye bye